Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Louise and my partner Steve and I have spent the good part of 18 months fully renovating our 80s bungalow and documenting the journey as we go. This video has been a long time in the making because today we are gonna go through the full timeline of everything we did to this bungalow to fully transform it. From the moment we walked through the doors of this place, we saw the potential. We knew there were some big challenges, but we definitely had a crystal clear vision to turn this house into a home that's not only functional, but also a reflection of our personal style and aesthetic. The journey has not been without its ups and downs. YouTube does a very good job of making everything look very fast, seamless and easy, but there has definitely been a lot of blood, sweat and tears that have gone into this renovation. But let me tell you, every single step has been worth it. And this has honestly been such a big achievement for us. So let's start at the beginning. We moved in the first week of January. We knew we wanted to crack on with certain projects straight away, so a lot of our belongings just got offloaded into the garage. The very first thing we wanted to tackle was our master bedroom. We decided to do a mini makeover in this room so that we had a safe space that felt like a bit of a sanctuary whilst there was chaos going on in the rest of the house. We stripped the wallpaper, painted the walls, and gave the orange wood wardrobes a lick of paint. We then added a rug, new curtains, and styled up the room just to make it feel a little bit more like home. We can't recommend doing this enough. When we first moved in, it really didn't feel like home, and just adding our own touch definitely made it feel way more cozy and homely. Whilst this was all happening, we also did not have a fully working boiler. We got short spurts of hot water, but there was no heating, which is really not great in January. So we had a new combi boiler installed. They removed the water tank from our hallway cupboard as we didn't need it anymore, which meant we had room to then move our washer and dry it and have it installed in its place. At the same time, we also had a full electrical inspection done on the house. Good news was it did not need a full rewire. However, there were quite a lot of things that were picked up, just certain things that weren't safe and up to code. We're so glad we did this at the beginning because it meant that as we went along with our renovations, we were able to rectify all of those issues as we went along. Now, the first big project we took on was this large glass feature wall between our lounge and dining room. There was a small part of me that kind of liked this feature, but there was an even bigger part that hated the brown wood and the dated swirly glass, so we ripped it out. Once the glass feature wall was out, we built framing to create stud walls to replace it. This allowed us to tailor the size of the opening and also line it up with the French doors. Not sure why it was slightly off center to begin with. Once the walls were up, we added insulation and plasterboard. This whole process was really nerve wracking and we definitely had imposter syndrome, but I'm so glad we were brave and tried to do it ourselves because we saved a lot of money. February rolled around pretty quickly and we decided to tackle Steve's office. For those of you who don't know, Steve also has a YouTube channel and he needs a setup to film his videos, so we decided to prioritize this space. We removed all of the built-in furniture from this room. We actually put it on Facebook Marketplace for free and someone collected it, so I'm glad that it found a new home because it was in pretty good condition. It just wasn't what we wanted. Once the furniture was out, we pulled up the old carpet, stripped the wallpaper. I then attempted to skim the Artex ceilings myself, which was a massive mistake never again. We painted the room and opted to go for two-tone on the walls. We also had the radios to replace at this time as well for something that was just more efficient, meaning that we could have a smaller one. We then turned our hand to laying new carpets. Never ever done this before, but it was surprisingly easy. Um, and then once that was all done, we moved Steve's stuff back in. March was where things started to get serious because we decided to demo the kitchen. This was the room we honestly could not wait to start on, so we were buzzing to get going. We ripped out all of the cabinets and gutted the whole kitchen. The only thing we left in place was the kitchen sink and dishwasher because we were still very much using the kitchen. 
Once the kitchen was out, we removed the wall between the kitchen and the dining room. It wasn't load bearing and it was a very thin stud wall, but ripping it out was so fun. Seeing this space opened up for the first time was such an amazing feeling and it made all the dust and chaos just a little bit easier to stomach. We also ripped up the flooring from these rooms. There were about five layers of lino and glue, which was pretty, pretty gross. At this point, we had our electrician in to do a lot of work across the whole house, but mainly roughing in our kitchen electrics and getting rid of the horrendous kitchen lighting that we had in there and replacing it with some spotlights. After I completely up skimming the ceiling in Steve's office, we got professionals in to skim the ceilings across our newly open plan kitchen, the lounge and the hallway. Lesson learned there. We also started to have some of our radiators replaced around this time, including our big vertical radiators in our kitchen and lounge. When April rolled round, we had an issue. The shower in our ensuite never worked from the moment we moved in. We were actually using our main bathroom, but then that shower decided to start leaking. At this point, we decided to prioritize our ensuite, which was much earlier than we had planned to do it. We demoed the ensuite ourselves by ripping out all of the cabinetry, tiling, removing everything apart from the things that were plumbed in. We decided to leave that for the professionals. We hired professionals to fit our brand new ensuite and tile everything. We opted for a walk-in shower and a huge vanity, which made such a big difference. It just felt like such a luxury compared to the rest of the house. Once the ensuite was finished, we had self-leveler poured to level out some of the flooring in the kitchen, lounge and hallway. Our floors were looking a little drunk before, so this was a vital step before we continued. Once the leveler on the floor had set, we ordered our kitchen. We opted to go with an Ikea kitchen because we'd heard a lot of good things about it. Plus they had the look we liked for a price that we loved. We built all of the kitchen units ourselves and installed our pantry units. It took us so long to install those three cabinets that we thought, nah, let's hire this out. May was a big month because this was when our kitchen was finally installed. After not having a fully functional kitchen for over a month, this was an amazing step. Thank God for our microwave and our air fryer because they really carried us through that time. Our kitchen fitters installed all of our cabinets, cover panels, plinths, and worktops, as well as the appliances. We installed all of the drawers and the handles ourselves to keep costs down a little bit. Once the kitchen was installed, we started working on the lounge. We said goodbye to the orange brick wall and gave it a lick of white paint, which helped massively to brighten the space up. I then started to lay our new flooring in the kitchen and the lounge. We went for a light oak laminate that we laid seamlessly across the two rooms. This was definitely a DIY friendly job and I'm glad I took it on. It was tiring, but I found it so satisfying to see it all come together. And again, doing it yourself is obviously a massive cost saving. During May, we also had a company out to work on our roof. The roof was in good condition, but it was covered in a lot of moss. They cleaned the whole roof by power washing all the moss off and treating it with a solution to prevent any regrowth. Turns out we did not know what the color of our roof was after all. We thought it was meant to be brown, but it was actually terracotta, so that was fun. In June, we decided to focus our attention on the lounge. We gave the fireplace a makeover and installed a floating mantle. It was nice to have this space starting to feel like a room again, so we styled it up a little bit, made it a bit more cozy. Definitely wasn't the finished product at this point, but it was looking a lot better. In July, the weather was a lot better, so we had our roof coated. Once it was cleaned, we did think, oh, actually this looks a lot better, maybe we just keep it terracotta, but we thought about it again and decided, nah, let's have it painted. The same team who cleaned it came back and coated it with a special roof paint in a dark gray charcoal-y color. And honestly, it looks like a brand new roof. Totally worth the money if you wanna spruce up your roof without forking out for a new one. At the end of July was when we had all of our windows and exterior doors replaced. The original windows were a dark brown wood and they were rotten. 
We actually ordered these windows with a local company in February, but there was a long wait list. That's why we didn't have them done sooner. We went for anthracite on the outside and white on the inside. We were another step closer to getting rid of all of the dark brown in the house, which was a good feeling. We opted to keep the original window sills to keep costs down. And also we would rather have wood over PVC anyway. Once the windows were in and the exterior was starting to come together, I wanted to work on the curb appeal a bit more. We had old paving slabs leading up to the house, so we pulled all of them up. This is another thing we listed on Facebook Marketplace for free. So someone just came and collected all of them, saved us paying for a skip, and they didn't go to waste, so happy days. At the beginning of August, we were finishing up the work to get the path up to the house all done. We laid loose limestone chippings where we pulled up the patio slabs and added dark gray stepping stones. Once that was done, we moved back inside to give the dining room in our open plan kitchen a little makeover. We added paneling to the back wall to add some visual interest and provide a feature wall that you could see when you walked into the kitchen. We used MDF cut down into wide vertical strips then painted them white. We then styled up the room, brought our furniture in and had a statement pendant light installed over the dining table. In September, we started to replace some of our internal doors, starting with the ensuite and lounge. We went for a modern ladder style door to replace the hideous brown doors. This was around the time I actually started a new job. So things on the renovation front were definitely a little bit more chill for a while. In October, I decided to add the finishing touch to the kitchen. I tiled the backsplash behind our hob. It was my first time tiling and I loved it. Another really satisfying job that was very DIY friendly. It was just one plain run of wall with no weird intricate cuts. So I knew it'd be the perfect time to try tiling. Once the tiles were in, we installed the cooker hood. I wanted a minimal boxed in look. So we made the framing ourselves, installed the extractor fan and clad it with MDF. It was a very budget friendly option to get the exact look we wanted. We finished off this space with open shelves on either side to give us a little bit of space where we could display some nice bits. We then finished laying the laminate flooring in the hallway, which tied the hallway kitchen and lounge all together. In November, we decided to run the same style of paneling from the dining area into the lounge. We loved how it turned out in the dining room so much that we thought it was the perfect way to tie those two spaces together with the same benefits of adding visual detail to the lounge. I DIY'd some canvases to fill the wall as this is the main wall you see as you walk into the lounge from the hallway. The Ikea sofa we had in here was actually faulty. So we managed to return it and then replace it with a stunning sofa from the sofa club. This is when we spent a lot more time really styling the lounge. And then it was December. We continued to install more doors and handles across the house. This was a job we hated. So we tried to tackle a couple here and there where we could. As Christmas was fast approaching, we decided to do a mini makeover on the guest room. So we had a space for people to stay. It was our first time hosting Christmas. So we definitely took on a massive challenge there. We cleared the room out because it was very much a dumping ground. We then stripped the wallpaper, painted the walls and styled it up with some furniture and soft furnishings. If this wasn't enough, we also decided to do a makeover on our entryway. We added paneling detail to the wall with hooks to create a cute little moment when you walked in and add a space to just put your shoes on. We also added a mirror and did a DIY radiator cover to add to the space. This radiator cover was like Marmite. Some people loved it and a lot of people hated it. Let me assure you guys now, it does not trap the heat in. January rolled around and we had officially been renovating for a year. We didn't mess around because the first week of January, we had demoed our bathroom. Same as with our ensuite, we removed as much as possible without touching the plumbing. We ripped out all of the tiles as well. When I say we, I mean Steve. I'm good at the building, but Steve is good at smashing. Again, we had a professional install the bathroom. It's just something we really didn't want to take on. So we hired a local plumber. We were really lucky that the layout of the bathroom was really good as it was. So it was just a case of taking out the old and replacing it with the new. We kept the bath with the shower above. We installed another massive vanity in this room and we used the same tiles on the walls that we used on the backsplash 
in the kitchen to tie those spaces together a little bit more. Once the bathroom was done, I also gave some of our cupboards a little makeover. We have a hallway cupboard and a laundry cupboard in the hallway. I wanted to give these a lick of paint as well as installing more shelving, hooks, etc., to make them more practical. At the end of January, we decided it was time to revisit the master bedroom. We vacated ourselves and our staff to the guest room so we could properly tackle the main bedroom. We removed the built-in wardrobes, stripped the remaining wallpaper that was hidden behind, and had our plasterer come in to skim the ceilings. So in February, once the plaster had set, we were ready to get decorating. We ripped up the old carpet, gave everything a lick of paint, and laid the new carpet. We decided to reinstall the wardrobes that were originally in here for a couple of reasons. Firstly, to keep the cost down, but also the wardrobes were in really good condition, so why not? We did rejig the layout of the wardrobes to allow us to add some drawers in the middle with space for our TV above. We managed to make it feel like a custom built-in, which we then painted to match the rest of the room. Once that was done, we also had our plaster to redo my awful job of skimming the ceilings in Steve's office. Once the ceilings were done properly, we decided to revisit this room. We weren't vibing with the two-tone paint, so we repainted it all one color and it looks so much better. In March, we revisited the guest room. Doing things this way definitely isn't the best use of time because we struggle to get trades in, book them in for certain jobs, and it's hard to juggle living in the house while trying to get the done. But anyway, guest room makeover, we had the ceiling skimmed by our plasterer, then it was fresh paint, new carpets, and styling it up. This is a multifunctional room because it's not only our guest room, it's also my office. So being able to finally claim this space was bliss. In April, when the weather was getting nicer, we've moved back outside again. We decided to tackle the dreaded garage. This was a dumping ground during the whole renovation. So this was a chore. We completely cleared it out, did several tip runs, cleaned it properly, then we painted everything white and also gave the concrete floor a lick of paint. We added some functional storage in here which helped us organize and keep everything in a particular place. We also spent some time in the garden sprucing it up. We sprayed our garden fences black and tidied up some of our flower beds. Towards the end of the month, we actually had someone come to spray paint our garage door, soffits, fascias and gutters in anthracite to match with the roof and the windows. This was the finishing touch to the exterior and it made such a difference. It was a great option to make everything look new for a fraction of the price. Garage doors are really expensive and there was nothing wrong with ours. So we literally just took it from a bleached brown color to a nice fresh gray. By the time May rolled round, we were pretty much done with all the big projects. We spent time doing lots of touch-ups and fixing snags. And that is a wrap on the renovation. It has honestly been such a whirlwind. I'm incredibly proud of what we've managed to achieve in this house. Walking through these rooms now, it's so hard to believe where we started. The lessons we've learned and the feeling of seeing this space come together has been priceless. I want to thank everyone who has been following along and supporting us on this journey. And just to remind you guys, we didn't really have any renovation experience whatsoever when we moved into this home. So if we can do this, you can very much do it too. I will also be filming a full price breakdown video. So if you wanna know how much we spent on the whole renovation, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss an upload. This isn't the end of the road for our renovations. So keep your peepers peeled because we are only just getting started. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed and I will catch you in the next one.